Hello and welcome to the magic of human beings. I'm Carol Cristina da Silva. I'm a theater maker, actress, voiceover artist, puppeteer. The magic of human beings was created to share extraordinary stories. I decided to have conversations with people that I love, respect, and are truly inspiring and to get glimpses on their journey to know how they got where they are and why they do what they do. I want to share these stories about challenge, change and transformation and connect with one another in that human level. It fills my heart with joy to share, celebrate and cherish their journeys and creativity. I would like to dedicate this episode of The Magic Human Beings to Chi Korea, who has died last month. He was a jazz master, an amazing jazz piano improviser, a versatile composer and a pioneer of the 1970s jazz rock fusion. And here is a message that he left for his fans. I want to thank all of those along my journey who have helped keep the music fires burning bright. It is my hope that those who have an inkling to play, write, perform or otherwise do so. If not for yourself, then for the rest of us. It's not only that the world needs more artists. Yes, it does. It's also just a lot of fun. So let's bring our guest, Greg Hutchinson. Let's. Greg, yeah. oh, wait a minute. Here we go. One and only Greg Hutchinson. Welcome to the magic of human beings. Hey. Hello, Greg. What's going on? Haven't seen you for ages. I know. How how is it going? I love oh. your intro. My gosh. Oh amazing. That's amazing. Amazing. Oh beautiful thing you're doing here for sure. Um I think people need this. You see, I mean, it's so funny that we've known each other a long time. Yeah. And you've seen, you know, we've talked, we talked on the phone and you've that you've commented on the things I've been trying to do. I feel you're doing the same thing, you know, like we're just trying to enlighten people and make their spirits lighter in these hard times. And, you know, it's 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 great that two friends can do this, I think, especially uh, especially during these times. So, yeah, oh, thank you, Greg. <laughs> Too generous. Oh, but it's it's about that, right? It is. It is. It is always. And I think uh, sometimes we forget that. But now is the time that we're reminded what it what it really is about and so it's super important that we have these talks amongst different genres of artists you know and and just people regardless of if, if you're an artist just talking to people you know and trying to help them out exactly and then then get connected with that energy yes that, that love and know that we are not alone yeah oh yeah oh yeah definitely I think people, they probably feel that. I, I guess it's, if you've been in, staying in the house for a long time, you start to, and you're not accustomed to what that is, I guess that can start to bring that about. And if you can't do what you love to do, yeah, that's a feeling that can come about. But it's not, you know, we're not, we're not done yet. Come on, man. No, no way we are done. No, uh -uh. <laughs> no, but not. What well, you just said, we are here to do what we are, what we are gonna do, and on that, I would like to know how did you start 
what was your formation, a bit about your background. Uh, let's see. Um, my mom and dad, <clears throat> my dad played the drums. Um, my mom's family was in music also. And so I came up with music in, you know, kind of always there. And I, I just took to the drums immediately at three years old. Um, and I just was, that, I knew that was going to be my calling. You know, some people, I'm lucky. I knew at three years old what, what my life was going to be like. I already had seen it. When you're so, three? Yeah, and it, and it, it, there's a whole lot behind that, too. Uh, therapy helped me to get to a whole lot of understanding. Yeah, um, subconsciously, we all have at a moment of thought in our lives at a very young age, which is going to influence, influence us. And I had that at three. And I knew that that was going to be my calling with the drums. Now, everything I did after that has been that, you know. Um, went to school, music school for high school, uh, for college also in New York. And then just got on the scene and started playing, you know. And um, growing up in New York City uh, uh, afforded me the luxury of not having to come there. I, I was already there, you know. Yeah. So, it's very interesting, you know. Now, in hindsight, where I am now in life, I can look back and, and look at, like, what a wonderful time in, uh, in music it was, especially in New York City. Yeah. Wow. Like, and you, you were brought up writing where everything was happening. That is, yeah, right in, right in Brooklyn. Yeah, right. I could go right over the bridge, I was right there. Uh, and you know, it's um, we had the masters living at that time, so it was you know, it was really easy to, to connect with them. You could, you felt like you know, any night you go out, you're gonna see Art Blakey or you're gonna see anybody, and they were super cool, you know, and so that's the thing. Uh, you know, and I guess they had the same thing for their generation. And the next generation, the younger guys, they'll have the same thing for them. So, you know, but it's just, it was a, a strange period in, in music. And, uh, oof. Wow. Must be so cool. No, it was crazy. Man. I was, it, was a, it was a lot of hanging. It was like a lot of not sleeping because you just stayed out. Like, I, regularly, it was like six in the morning. And forget summertime. Summertime was the worst. It was like you just wanted to be in the music. And that's how you learn, though. That's how you learn your craft. Where would you go? Yeah, we didn't have YouTube. We didn't have this yeah. Instagram. It was really you had to get out there and really experience what life is. And I think that's a big difference, man. I, I really hope and encourage the young people. This, is, this, this tool, which we are on now, has taken such a, a life of its own with you guys. And, man, but... Don't forget about what it feels like to actually speak to a person, like to actually talk to a human being, to be, you know, have a feeling for someone. If you're just going to make life this, then we're, we're all in trouble. I mean, so I, I, I really am talking to the younger people because the older people, they, some of them can't even operate <laughs> computers. So this doesn't pertain to them. But the younger generation, let's make sure we keep that, that, that life happening, you know. What's up, Nisi? We got all friends coming. Oh, you got all <laughs> Nisi, this is Cal. So Nisi is uh, is a, a great person, a great woman, a great instrumentalist. Um, the uh, other half of a, a legendary drummer who passed away a long time ago uh, named Tony Vitas. And Nisi can tell you about like growing up, being in New York at that time because basically she was there and hanging all the time. But Nisi, isn't Carol's smile the best? Her smile so crazy. <laughs> That's why I came on here, man. The laugh and the smile is why I came, because the people need to see this. Like, this is crazy. Like, anytime I've seen you, anytime you've been around, that laugh and that smile, we always like, okay, there you go. Oh, my God. Uh, my go. mom, my mom, she, she popped in as well, and my sister. Oh, Craig, good, you have man. To hey, family. guys, what's up? What's up? Okay. They have my dad as well. Like, my, wow. my mom, massive laugh. And then my mom, dinner time, she said, Go and get your dad. And this was in a little like village, fisherman's village. And I was like, how? And she's like, she's like, oh, he, he, he'll be in one of the bars. So I'll be walking around and I just heard the loudest laugh. And I was like, oh, I know where he is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, we don't have to worry about losing you. <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> you uh, no, but it was always fun, man. I mean, it's always like it's so it's so nice that we we connect and we stay here uh, and we know each other for years, and so. <laughs> It's like I see time through you also, through friends I meet and friends that I know through friends. It's like we see the time and you've been on the road with us. So, you know, it's like it's, um, you know, you see what we're, you see what we're yeah. missing now. And, and Greg, was it's so beautiful that I have this opportunity to be talking here, that I create the magic of human beings. And each week I speak with a friend because yeah. then I do a bit of research on them. And then, for example, looking back, I was like, wow like what incredible moments i found this video with uh, zoha vital oh you told me yeah you introduced him yeah. to the, like his first live gig the, drum moment. <laughs> the first drum hey listen man we like to get them young inspire them you know what i mean if you get them young three years old i was so shoot why nothing is too young to inspire a young person man they all you got to do is you know kids are when you're a kid you have a whole different fascination for something so you're not technical you're just like ah. <gasps> Bang, 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 and that's what it was. You know, that's that's how you start the instrument. Mm. Wow, and this is crazy, man. It's like, it's so it's weird to, that we're talking here because it's like we we hang, we know each other a long time, um, and so like when you approach, when you ask, hey, would you be into this? I was like, oh, that would be great because we always have a great rapport. We've always had a you know, been it's super cool. And this is something that I tell people when you when you're around people on the road, like, and you know them. Um, they it's family. It's not so much the music as the music. The music is kind of the the letdown from the rest of it, because the rest of it is really what it's about. It's it's being around each other on the road. It's it's seeing each other at breakfast. It's going to the sound checks. It's going to the dinners. At, that's the that's the family. That's what I miss. Yeah. The music is the music. That's that's the last part of it. But that friendship and and camaraderie, man. That that thing right there, like. I mean, I've spoken to Aaron, I've spoken to Josh, uh, Ruben, you know, and like those guys are my musical family on the road. They have been for 20 years, so I missed that. Yeah, I'm sure it must be being so hard for everyone. And it's like playing together, being on the road as well, and now not being able to be in a place and... Yeah. And for all everyone else who love uh, concerts and music, they are yeah. suffering so much as well. They're like, I yeah. can't see things on YouTube. I want the experience to be there with them. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's, uh... but at the same time, I, I think maybe it was, it, was, it was a needed break so we could all just kind of step back and look at what we really are doing oh. and what's really going on. Um, a lot of questions to be raised, a lot of, What's up, Jonathan Barber? Great drummers coming in. A lot of questions to be raised. Like society is 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 raising a lot of issues that also exist within the arts. So, you know, I think now is a great time for everyone to really step back and think about: is the playing field fair? You know, not just for women, for you know, for men, for gays, for lesbians, for everyone, for everyone. And then what do we see represented in the industry? What is really shown? What do you see all the time? So these are questions that we need to really start asking. I started asking these questions. I posed a thing about flurries and my Instagram account got hacked. So <laughs> I, I, guess I, I, guess I, I guess I went on the right way because somebody is very upset that I started this. Because I talk about a lot of things, but never got hacked. But that's okay because we're coming back. Uh -huh. It got hacked. And then what happened? Oh, I just said, you know what? Listen, guys, let me explain. So I'm going to say this. And people are going to think I'm crazy. Instagram is just Instagram. Yep. My life doesn't exist around Instagram. Instagram is Instagram. This is what I'm trying to tell everybody. You get caught up on this right here and you forget what it's really about. This is my life right here. These two things right here, that's that's. Okay, right. This and your big tool. heart. Uh, yeah, and yeah, but they all connected. In your head. They all connected, right? So, if someone wants to hijack my Instagram and then try and charge me to get it back, man, come on, I'm not really. That's not. Yeah, no, no. it's crazy. So I think it's someone that I pissed off. Could be. Greg, anyway, really? Go. Someone hacked and trying to get money? Yeah, yeah. Come on, really? <laughs> 
or Instagram account. <laughs> this is so silly. It really is, man. So and so this is the problem. This is why I want to say, like, I understand that people feel down and, and people are in need of money, but, like, don't make your thing... Don't put someone else in a position because you're in a position. That, that's just not how it should work. It's like we're supposed to uplift and you know, there's been a lot of negativity going on and it's just like, I can't understand why people choose to take this time to expose themselves. But this platform right here is giving people, unfortunately, you're doing it the right way, but it's giving people, unfortunately, the, the opportunity to do it the wrong way and to just really be critical of people who are just trying to make a living and doing what they love. Who, who is anyone to criticize someone for doing what they love to do? And this is the thing I'm trying to bring awareness to. And when I start talking on that, well, you know, some people, it, you touch a nerve sometimes in people and they can't take it. They really can't. And so I guess I touched the nerve. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, it's okay. You know what? It's, it's okay. Right. I mean, that, that doesn't change. It's all right, though. It's... You know what? I'm, I, I was talking to a friend of mine and he said, um, He's a great drummer, Charles Pritchard. And he said, hey, your generation, you, you got to step up. You're the OG. You got to step up. And you know what? He's right. And so I don't mind that happening because I am going to speak about what I think is going on, what should be going on. And, and it's not to say that my word is the final word. No, I'm not saying that at all. But I've been doing this a long time. I'm 50. I've been doing this since I was 16. So I think I have a little something to say. So we all do. Totally. And not only that, it's like you've lived, you've seen, you've been through change, through challenge, transformation, and we are still transforming. So if we share what we are sharing now and we still, because it's exactly how you say about your music and your jazz and your students, you want just to get better. You want yeah. to grow, right? With the mind, with, with yeah, the and the mind, about everything. Something different. Now we're talking about something different, though. Now we're getting deeper because the mind has to be conscious to want to go deeper that way. And see, that's the problem. It's not that the people's minds aren't conscious that way. They talk, people talk, but they're not really. Like, see, this whole period, I did a transformation. You saw it online. You saw my body transform. You saw my mind transform. So, and I'm doing it again, you know? And so oh, people's, oh, minds, oh. people's minds, people's minds just have to Greg. be right, man. Talking about this transformation, you just said your body. And that I would like you to share with us a bit of that. Because for me, that was incredible. Like yeah. uh, how, when you decide to go to get fit. And I remember being on the road uh, with you guys and Josh. You saw it the first time. Yes, insanity. <laughs> you saw it the first time. Insanity, that's all it was. You saw it the first time, yeah. And that's You saw what we were doing. You saw us on the road, right? Yeah, so it was coming to the... A hotel leader where what you done what are you guys doing here in this yep you saw us it was incredible and see, that's another thing about family and togetherness and when you started inspiring the order and exactly let's get sharp we are doing but, our but you see what it is also it's also see this is the thing i keep teaching and either people have it or they don't have it it's motivation and it's desire and it's determination. So we're on the road, mind you. Motivation, motivation, determination, 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 and desire. And desire, okay. So we're on the road. Our schedule is crazy, but yet every day we were taking the time to work out. Sometimes as a group, sometimes me and Josh, me and Aaron, or whatever, right? But we were doing that every day. So the same mentality that we have for the music and life is the same way that we approach everything. And so that's why I'm, I'm trying to inspire people to understand like how you are as a person comes out in your art, how you are also. Yeah. So if you're a better person, your art will be better. If you're not, then it will stay where it is. So it's simple, really simple, but people don't want to go there. Mm -hmm. They don't want to take the time to just sit still this mm. sit how long can you sit still for wow yeah i i you know i learned a lot with my ex-wife she's super great sarah what's up 
you know Sarah. Yeah, and, and, and I love so, Sarah. So yeah, you know, you know, you know everybody. I love so, Sarah. But I learned a lot. I learned a lot from her, and I learned a lot about that. Like really, and the yoga really hooked me up. So it was. You saw me. The transformation was all of those things. Yeah. It was the yoga. It was. It was the mind being right. And and I tell you, man, I, be, growing up a young man, you know, yoga. I, I'm from New York, from Brooklyn. At that time, yoga. You tell a black guy yoga, hey, man. You're right. We're not doing. I tell you what. When I started doing yoga, my life changed. It completely changed, and I feel bad. I gotta get back into it now. My life completely changed, Carol. Completely. For real. Like I became stronger internally. See, people think you gotta build muscle and be like this. No, the inner strength is strength. the most important. Yeah, and the muscles yeah. get strong from the inside out. So, man, yeah. I was like elastic, man. I'm like. You know, doing hand. I'm in the dressing room doing handstands and stuff. Cats are like, <laughs> <laughs> amazing. But it's also showed that there is no time. The time is when you want to change, right? Mm -hmm. When you know what you want, you want to change. You just have to start. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we had this time now, right? We had this whole period for people to really make a, a decision on how they want to live their lives. Um, America was, uh, you know, the crisis was not only the pandemic, but the, the dealing with the politics and, and everything that happened. And so things don't just transpire all at the same time just by coincidence. There is no coincidence in life. Self-esteem prophecy. So... The fact that all these things happened at the same time is really telling every, and the fact that everyone's life was affected in a way, it's different if it's just a group of people, but it was everyone. And we all were asked to do one simple thing and we couldn't do it. Wow. We failed as society. We couldn't stay inside. We couldn't stop what we were doing. We were so caught up on our own selves that we couldn't stop and think of the other person next to us and i'm overseas and i see it still i'm in a culture that hugging and kissing that's what they do yeah yeah now, you know i'm yeah. saying yeah i'm talking yeah. to you like we you in the states it. you know yeah. what i'm talking so you know to tell to tell italian people not to hug and kiss is crazy but she how are we going to get out of this if we don't learn to compromise and this shows the selfishness of human beings truly does. It really does. There's no other way you can look at it. Like, we're too selfish. We can't just stop for a little bit and just stay quiet so everything can heal. Yes, true. But yet there is there are other people who who were helping, who were going shopping, who got community oh, yeah. spots together, phones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And who needs shopping? Who is very vulnerable? No, that, that's good. That, yeah, yeah. That, we need so, that. That we needed because we would need, yeah, I'm just talking about, the, I think more the attitude of like the denial of wanting to do something that could help, you know, people helping. Yeah, that's great. I think the other people that just like, okay, well, now, nah, never mind. I don't need it. You know, no, we, we do. Like we're back in this, in, in Italy again, we're in the red zone again. So Come it's on, also man. amazing to see that there are people who raised to the occasion and yeah, so it was, it, it's been a very interesting time seeing all kinds yeah. happening. But Greg, what about, because you said when you were growing up and you have been out all the time, which places were you going at that time? Oh, wow. It was Vanguard, the Blue Note, uh, Bradley's. Are they still there? Uh... The Vanguard and the Blue Note. Okay. Bradley's is gone. Um, wow, there were a bunch of clubs, man, really. Um, it, things change. Other new spots have popped up, like Smalls, of course, you know, popped up. Metro, a whole lot of other spots popped up. But, you know, there was a different kind of hang. Bradley's was kind of like that. That's where all the masters came. And Bradley's was the proving ground. Like the Vanguard and Bradley, to me, the Vanguard and the Bradley's were, were, are the proving grounds. Like once you played at the Vanguard and once you played at Bradley's, especially Bradley's, because the owner, Wendy, she was like, she had certain ways. Like she didn't like a lot of people playing in that room. 
So I graduated. I got to play that room all the time. Um, Kristen McBride played in there all the time. Shit, uh, Diana Krall played in there. There were a whole bunch of everybody that came up. You know, I'm saying so the movement was like you that was everything. If you got to play there, you had proved yourself. And so Ooh. those clubs existed. Yeah, and all I did was every night, you know, the thing is like at that time, you know, you're a young kids, so they 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 everyone's like, Oh, this is so nice, so they let you in for free. So that's great that you do it at a young age, because as you get older, they still remember you and they keep letting you in for free. And then when you play there, it changes the dynamic. And so like it was like from Everyone in New York seeing me to getting in the clubs to playing in the clubs to come and see me playing on the concert halls, like they all took pride in like you know, and so I'm a New York you know I'm a New York bred like I'm just a product of that scene, and so yeah, coming up, man, I hang every night every night wow, so good, and Greg, what was you'd say was your first big gig? That you fought. Damn. My first big gig was a gig with a trumpet player named Red Rodney. And Red Rodney used to play with Charlie Parker. And uh, Woo! Red Rodney was great. And this, you know, this is where I tell people about going to school. I was in school at the time at Manhattan School of Music. I was going to my second year. Um, and I had a choice to make. I was on full scholarship. Um, but I know that I wanted to play music. Like, I want to play. And so I asked my advisor, which is Justin DeChocho, who's my dude. And he said, hey, man, school's always here. Shit. They'll pay you to come to school. Go do your thing. So I left. Um, and, Red, and Red was really like, he was like, man, I really want you to finish school. But OK. So I was on the road with Gary Dial, Dick Oates, and Jay Anderson. Which is a very strange thing. I'm the only black guy in the band. But it was so cool because they were just like, they were like family, you know, it was like super cool. Red was like fucking, excuse me. Red was like, you know, this amazing man with stories that if I could, if he was alive to tell you, like he was an impersonator. He had done many things in his life. He impersonated a general to steal the checks from the army. What? Yeah, what? No, it was crazy, man. It was crazy. So like I'm, lear I'm learning all of this, like, traveling with these guys. The first time I went to Europe was with Red Rodney. And the first time, the first place we went to was Amsterdam. And now you know me, Carol. You know I smoke. But so these guys, they take me to the bar. And how old were you then? How old were you? Uh, eight, 18, <laughs> 17, 18. Okay. So they take me to the wow. bar, right? And I'm, I'm like, I'm paranoid because I'm like, oh, what? so I, I said, okay, we can have a drink. Cool. No, no, wait, let me get my, yeah, more like 20, 21. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we go in the bar and I ask for, I think, a Heineken. And the guy looks at me like I'm stupid. He's like, a Heineken? Ah, what do you want, Heineken? Wait, what? What do you want, man? I'm like, a Heineken. He's like, that's what do you want? And I'm like, what? and they're laughing at me. He's, he pulls out this menu of all this kind of smoke. And I was yeah. like, wow. <laughs> so the guys in the band, they say, hey, man, listen, the show is tonight. Like, they had me, like, on, like, a leash. They were like, okay, you can take this. So that was my first, first experience overseas, first experience on the road, playing bebop on the road, you know, because that's what Red Rodney did. He was a bebop trumpet player, so that's what we played. And I was great, man. I mean, that got my appetite wet. And I knew that this was going to be my life, for sure. Oh, wow. It got yeah. you there. You were, like, amazing. Uh, so much fun. Oh, man. This is a great life. I mean, I can't complain. Like, I always, you know, I tell people, if it stopped now, I've done so much and accomplished so many things with other people. I've been part of other people's success and helping them be successful, I feel so good. Like, so there's no regrets, man, at all. Like, I really can say, like, for where, at 50, what I've done to 50, man, a lot of people, I hope, get a chance to do, but a lot of people don't. And so I don't have any regrets. I just want people to experience what I've experienced because the stuff that I've experienced, woo, is stuff that movies are made of. I'm telling you. And you know me. And it's all, it's, 
it's an incredible thing because you get to go to amazing places, incredible places, but and do what you love best. Yeah, I mean, but the, your talent. My mom told me something when I was young. She said, "You know what?" And it's applied to something else, but I'll put it to this. My mom was very frank when it came to a lot of things. Your talent takes you. You don't have to talk. Like, just put your energy into what you do, and that will take you where you need to go. So that's what I did. Like, I put my energy into what I wanted to do, which was just play the instrument and and really be good at it. What like, a good, I had great this... advice! So she yeah, told you, you to put do. your energy where you want to go. Yeah. Stop. Take no out of your vocabulary. Too many people say no. They have no in their Ingrid. What's up, Jensen? They have no in their vocabulary. No is just not a good word. Like, why do you say no? What is no? Ingrid is my sister. <laughs> oh, that's your sister. I thought yeah. it was Ingrid the trumpet player. I'm sorry. Hey, Ingrid, what's up, girl? <laughs> well, wait, Idu, Idu is not your sister. Idu is no, a drummer no. from Brazil. Idu Ribeiro, no. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a drummer from Brazil. Yeah, he's a great, he's my friend. Oh! Yeah, man, he's a, listen, this guy, let me tell you, you, you want to know how you get inspiration from others during this period? When you have people like, like him that, that come on and we talk online, that he's an amazing, he's one of the nicest, sweetest people. And at the same time, when he gets behind those drums, it's like a different person. And it's so inspiring to see, like, man, I tell you, there's a few cats that I look up to that I really respect like that. He's one of those guys. So he, and he knows that, man. I, I, I was making a joke with him. I said, man, I want to come and study with you. But he thought I was joking. But I actually <laughs> wasn't joking. Like, see, he, he still thinks I'm joking, but I'm not joking. So, you know. Oh. Oh, and talking about this, about being on the drums and he transformed. Tell me about you. Like, when you get to the drums, like, is that a, is that a transformation? Is that a connection to the core? Is that, what, what is that? like it's well the, the problem with me and as someone so i'm going to address a couple of things with this perfect okay watch this guys so as someone <laughs> stated online a, a person who was being very negative towards me online said something that i didn't pay attention to my kids growing up which i've clearly already laid that whole story out about being young and being in this music and just really wanting to be something of this kind of person that was great, that yes, I did not pay the attention that I should have paid to my daughters. And I regret that. And I'm trying to help people not make that mistake. But someone wanted to take that and, and as we say, throw salt. But the, the reasoning behind this thing that happened to me is because I am the drum. I live this. I live this. It, it doesn't stop, Carol. It's not a trend. It, that, that, see, that's, that's where I, it's not like I stopped when I'm not playing, I'm this all the time. Like, this is me, all, you've seen me, this is me all the time. And that's the difference between me and a lot of people. And maybe it's a fault. And maybe as I've gotten older, I understand that there's more to life than just the drum, but it's really hard for me to, to make that break because that's how I came up. That was my way out. That was my way to make my life. So I can't, it's like the drum, Duke said a drum is a woman, well, She's right there all the time, right in back of me. She's never too far away. So I can't do something that's not in my heart. And in my heart is to play the drums. And I tell people, anyone with, in a relationship with me that, yeah, well, that, that kind of was the first thing, you know? And my kids, now I understand better. So I keep it real. Sometimes it's too, sometimes the things I say, I think are, are too, are too much for people. I, I think I hit people in a way that they don't, they're not really ready to deal with. Like a lot of people don't think about the sacrifice that you have to make and what it really takes if you really want to be great. And I'm not great, but if you really want to achieve something to make yourself proud, you got to put the work in. And at a young age, sometimes you don't understand how to make the balance. And I didn't understand that balance at all. I just understood music. That was it. So. Yeah. So there's no separation still. We still, I'm still the same way. And so when you get there and you're gonna play the drums, what is That's magic. That's, uh, 
that's a feeling that that nothing is better than nothing. That that's something I can't even describe that to you. It's it's I guess if you would say it's a transformation. It's a and connection. I find out connection this. to the core. Connection. Yeah. To the but it it reminds me of maybe what the feeling would be like after your soul uh, is transforming. What is that space that exists right there? We, we we won't know until we get there. Ah, you understand? This is the feeling the whole time. We won't know until we get there. It's beautiful. Because uh, you never get there. And the most, the most beautiful thing that I find, like I saw many times, and when something really magical happens, that I think it's so touching, it's when you guys, because I saw some of you, some of your guys' masterclass when you're giving yeah. with Josh, and I was like, my God, this is incredible. And because I was studying theater and uh, doing a lot of improvisation as well, uh, mm -hmm. putting plays together, so there were things you guys were talking about that resonate exactly with what we were doing. Mm -hmm. Like, well, you have to learn your craft, but learn it so well. And then you forget about it. You learn it, it's yeah. new, and you forget about it. Yeah. And then when exactly. you when you put yourself on that stage, you listen to the others. You have to be present and yes, listen thank to one you. another. Thank you. And then the dialogue it's inside you will come. So when you're teaching about that, and I was like, oh my god, it's when you when you had these students going to the piano to the drums and you're talking yeah yeah, yeah. that's what we that's what it is though you're like you're not but giving you each other guys you're not giving each other space exactly they have to learn these things but you know it's no different than the conversation um music is the conversation so when we learn see right there was a perfect example i took the time i stopped and i gave it to you again right that's how, so you ever have a conversation with someone you just talk, like, like you just talk over each other and nobody, and so then it, what, what is that? Like, why is that energy that way as opposed to like, okay, let me hear you out. And sometimes I do that. Let me hear you out and then, you know what I'm saying? So music is the same way. It's the same thing. Is that, I mean, any art is the same thing, actually, not just music, though. You know, yeah, like, yes. And like, I mean, do the people know? Do the people know about you? Do they know everything about you? Because I've seen those puppets. I've seen. I've seen. <laughs> I've seen. You know, like really, your 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 thing is incredible. I hope, like, I like like I don't know if you've done it, but if, if you put up some some videos of the pup, like some videos now or or something like something, I, cause I've seen you do it, and it's incredible. So I Thank think you. that's inspiring. <laughs> because Thank that's you. Now, it is. It is. But that's something beautiful. now that we can we can resonate with as more than playing an instrument. I think it's the storytelling that you can do. Yes, it's, it's different. It translates different over this medium. Playing is not the same thing, but a story that you can do uh, that's that's for me that would be a whole different thing. True, but also, Greg, music. Yes, ma'am. So healing. So when, when the four of you are there, or whoever, and you're yeah. playing, and you have this connection with one another, and that's the family also. Yeah. The family, yeah. the traveling together, that you, you develop that connection. Yeah. And when you're all listening to each other, and making each other sound even better. <laughs> yeah. No, it's great. Yeah. Well, it's, I no mean, selfish. You're just like, you're in the give mode. That's it. But, you know, like I said, it all has to do with the way, you know, look, 20 years, when you play with somebody over 20 years, you know them. And so the, 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 the part of playing the music is easy, but at the same time hard, because 20 years, you, if you play with someone for 20 years, that means that you're doing something right, right? That also means that you have the ability to change all the time. So if you listen to us playing with Josh, for instance, over the 20 years, the tunes that we have evolved playing, that we started playing one way, but since we all evolved as men, 
we've all changed the way we play, which has made the conversation different every time. So that's what that is. It's a growth. Like we've all grown as men. We, I've seen families grow. I've seen people who I didn't think were going to have kids have kids. Ruben, <clears throat> my man, <laughs> love you, brother. Hey, we're going to take a time to say this up to uh, a dog, Josh and Ruben, Blade, Harlan, you know, that whole family. We love everybody. Okay. Yes. Oh. This is fun, man. <laughs> now this is fun because we know each other. It's like a, it's like two people just talking, you know. Like it, there's no. I mean, we could do this for hours. It's like there's so much stuff to to talk about. I but. know. And Greg, another thing because for the ones for people who want to get better in their craft. Yeah. Uh, how practice? Like you said, your one is just down there. Like, what would you recommend practice? How? That's the that's the that's the biggest thing right there. So, <laughs> practice is a routine. A routine yeah. is 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 something that you do over and over and over. Now you have to have the discipline. See, these are the other words: routine and discipline. Those two usually make or break most people's careers because they don't have, if you don't have both of them, you are stuck. If you don't have the discipline, you're stuck. If you don't understand the routine, you're stuck. So practicing is the same thing. Make a routine for every day that you're going to follow and then you'll get better at your craft sooner as opposed to being random. So things that you can do that Like if you live in an apartment and you're an instrumentalist, okay, well, you know the hours of the day that you need, you can play. So you play during those hours. But the other hours is when you do the listening homework and all the other stuff that you can't do. If you're a singer, same thing. If you're a therapist, whatever you are, you understand what to do. And then have a routine of how you go about doing that. Don't try and practice and learn everything at one time because that doesn't work. D carpent uh I'm thinking of decompress. Make put things in compartments, right? Understand what you're trying to learn and go in order. If you go from here to here, but you skip this step, well, at some point you might get far, but you're gonna have to come back and learn this. Yep. You can't build the house from the first floor. The house has to be built from the foundation. No foundation, no house. House. It's simple. Yeah. Really simple. So keep... That's how I practice, yeah. And that's how I teach, too, you know. Yes, and you have a master class coming up. That is so I exciting. Do. I do. It's, uh, I hope it doesn't get hacked. <laughs> 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 I'm, no, I'm serious, actually. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's, it's the fit, March the 15th at 6 p.m. Euro time. It's 6 p.m. my time, Italy time. I know you guys have daylight savings time. Wake up. Don't worry about it. Um, and yeah, and so that's that's, that's there. Gregory Hutchinson 43 gmail.com. But I want people to come through and get those lessons. That that that's the master class is one thing, but the lessons are where you really learn. And I've got some great students who ah, okay, who've been, so who, yeah, it's great. Lessons that, oh, I've been yeah, I've been uh -huh. driving my I got a lesson right after this. Uh -huh. <laughs> so well, it's like but I like guys teaching. Lucky? I got. Wow. I, I love teaching, Carol. It's like I love what I love what I do. You know, I love giving back to cats and helping them out. Um, there's a few cats that have been great. A guy, Kai Craig and Noah Paul and Joel uh, Waters. Like these three young guys, man, came and studied with me during this time, and they they sound incredible. They were already good. They sound incredible now, man. So I'm inspired by. I get right there three guys who have given me instant gratification back you understand what i'm saying so it's like through them learning the way that they learn and showing the appreciation and doing the work i got the high from it people don't get that man they don't really get that like i watch all these things going on, on instagram and people everybody's so far off with what it's about man and i wish i could touch everybody but i can't touch everybody and i you know what it's not for everybody to be touched that way exactly it's not It's, Hutch, it's for the people that really do want it. what you do best. Yeah, it's, it's for the people that really want it, right? Yeah, and it's the people who are ready 
to yeah. step up. People who are ready to step up, go to the next level, they'll find you. Yeah, but they they'll, not just me. They'll find you too. Yeah, they'll find me too. <laughs> but these people, what we're talking about, though, is bigger than this, this, the, this music or anything. Those people need to be the people to find each other because those are the people that are going to make the world successful. You understand? So those people that want to do that work have that in their minds already. And it applies to more than just what they do. It's how they are. And that's what we're missing. That's the thing that's missing. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to get people to understand. And it's like, I, I joke around. I tell a lot of jokes. But if you yeah. really know me, you really understand me, you, you understand where I'm coming from. Like, I try to appeal to everyone. The guy who doesn't understand, the person who's the intellectual, the, the girl over here, the, you know, whoever you are. Like, we want to appeal to everyone. We don't want anyone to feel left out. And yeah. I think that's what a lot of people have felt. And we got to change that. So for me, that's that's why I teach. Oh, there is already people saying here, Greg, Greg is the best teacher. He. I paid them. I paid those guys. Thank <laughs> God for checking the mail, man. Well, uh, yeah. that's not true because me seeing him in master class with the with the others and after the master class, they all around Greg. Everyone's around Greg. I just like to talk. You've always been so generous with your time. Because after, that's how we learn. After gigs. After, that's how we yeah. learn. So that's how we learn. That's how I learn. Do you, exactly. That's what I'm going to ask. It was that passed you through the older generation. Yeah. Sharing the it. love. Exactly. Like the movie, that movie wasn't a joke. You got to pass it forward. If you don't pass it forward, then that's selfish. Oh, my God. So... Imagine if all the masters never took the time to talk to me or never took the time to correct me when they saw me doing something wrong. I wouldn't be me now. So we all need each other. That's the whole point. And so this, like, you know, that's, that's, that's the biggest thing. Talking to people after the show, you know, man, listen, I get a chance to sit on stage for two hours and do what I love, and I get paid to do it very well. I'm not complaining. I have no problem to talk to you after the show, before the show. Hey, I like to talk because then that way you're watching where you're like looking to see what I'm doing. You're like, damn, okay, that's the dude I spoke to. That shit. <laughs> damn. Like, like this is always the look like. Wow. Okay. You guys, you see now, you notice what I said? You guys, not you. You guys sound awesome. Not Greg, you sound awesome. You guys sound awesome. That is what I look for. I don't need you to tell me I sound awesome. You know what? I work hard. I know I sound awesome. I better sound awesome. <laughs> I don't want to take anything less than that. That's not acceptable for me. I was trained and taught it has to be 100% right all the time. And if it's not right all the time, you better make it right. So I don't need for anyone to come to me and say, man, it sounds great. I'm not looking for that. If no, but no, you're not. Great, you're, there, no. you're there to share. They come with yeah. questions and you're there being generous, being present. That's it. Be present. Like, I've seen it many times. And I, I think it's beautiful. I think it's Be present. beautiful. That's it. Family and you guys helping each other and... Greg, what do you we think is the future of jazz? Oh, How the future's think... good. There's a lot of good players. Um, the future of the jazz is the past of the jazz. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's... The future of the jazz is the understanding of how to go forward and understand how to build something going forward so strong from the past that when you go forward, it, the foundation of it has some meaning mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. That's the future of the music. Yeah, having you have to invest in. Listen, you anything you do, you have to invest in. You got to invest time in understanding where it grew from. You can't just be like, okay, I'm gonna start from here, and this is my shit, and that's it. It doesn't work that way. I wish it did. <laughs> but it, doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. The oh. people that sound the best, who are the most creative thinkers, who who we admire as some of the greatest actors and actresses or whatever, politicians, are the people who already understood and worked this way. And is that anyone 
if you could have played with anyone, who would that be? Well, funny story. I turned Chick down not to play with him. And uh, hindsight, I wish I would have done it. But then that would have led me away from Josh. So uh -huh. I can't really say that because I made, you know, Chick is Chick. Rest in yeah. peace, my friend. But uh, we knew each other, so that was cool. But I don't, I don't think I would have changed. I wanted to play with Josh. So yep. I wanted to play with some cats my doing my age that was, you know, that we could form a sound and have a band. Chick's thing was Chick's thing. And when you go into Chick's thing, you go into Chick's thing. You know, this way we form the sound of a band. Woo! That's big. <laughs> that's, to me, that's bigger. That was bigger. Like, if you look at those records we did, that's that's... Listen, it's funny because I, I, it's funny, I've been thinking about, if you think about that period of music and you think about what, think about the things that changed the music, and that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to put it on people's minds. Think about the records that changed those period, of, that period of jazz. That's all. And we're going to leave it there. Yay! We're just going to say that. Leave, leave it there. Leave, it, leave there. it there. Think about those records that changed Think about the Joe Henderson record, right? Mm. Changed my life. So we all need something to, to help us to, to reach that next level. So. Oh my God, you created a question there. What like what records changed your life? That record changed my life. Um, oh, so many Joe Jones records listening to, um, records that I played on that led to other things. Yeah, that, that was great. Um, I don't know, just like, I, I just came up listening to a lot of Blakey records, a lot of um, Max records, Philly records, Tony, Elvin, Clifford Jarvis, uh, you name it, you know, Chick Webb. I had great teachers, so it's really been uh, a very lucky ride, man. I can't, like I said, I can't complain. This is uh, blessed, so much fun. Huh? Blessed, very blessed, Greg. And yeah. Greg, there is a question that I always ask, which is like, if you'd had a superpower, what would that be? <laughs> invisible. Oh, invisible. Okay. Yeah, invisible. invisible because I like that. And yeah. if you could go anywhere, time, past, future, travel, time, where would that be? If I could go anywhere? Anywhere. Okay, two places. Can I go, can I go two places? Yeah, one, sure. One, the first place I would have gone would have been right into the studio session when Jocko was recording Teen Town. Mm. The next place, Huh. If I could go any, the next place would probably be like to my daughter's high school graduation. Mm. Maybe we'll stop there, huh? Oh yes, Greg. That would have been that would have so been the much. thing I would have loved to go to. Go oh, to. Yeah. Greg, and uh, we've been talking, and uh, <laughs> I start with cheek. So I'm going to finish with yes, yes, something that he said to his friends, musicians, and to my amazing musician friends who have been like family to me as long as I've known you. It has been a blessing and an honor learning from and playing with all of you. My mission has always been to bring the joy of creating anywhere I could and to have done so with all the artists that I admire so dearly. This has been the richness of my life. And I think what we've been talking and about the richness of your Ooh. life, wow. it fits so well. That's pretty, that's, yeah, amazing. Greg. It's... That's what we all, that, I mean, he, that, that's, you can't sum it up any better than that. Shit, that says it all. That's what we do it for, to share the experience with our friends. And uh, yeah, that, that's a, oof, ooh wow. 
that's um that puts it all in perspective, man. That's all we want to do is just share the music with people and and try and make people feel good. So and rest in peace, Jake, man. Woo, we. And thank you, Sometimes, Brad, boy, for you gotta sharing. hear something to make you feel a certain way, man. That shit will always get me. Exactly, and elevate ourselves. Wow. Greg, thank yes. you for thank you, spending this time, this hour with me. Anytime. Fantastic. Anytime. It was beautiful, so inspiring. Yes, and spreading yes. joy and inspiring yes. so many other people. I hope people. everybody enjoyed, man. Anytime, please. It's my pleasure. I thank salute you. you, my brother. I salute you, sister. Woo! Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.